Hey everyone, Giselle here, and today I am here for a book haul. And I haven't done a book haul in a while, except for that one with Chris that we filmed, like, in August. So it's kind of been ridiculous. I have bought a ton of books. Chris and I have been on a book buying binge lately, but we just haven't even showed, I think, even half of the books that we have acquired. But yesterday, we ended up going to the thrift store and we found a ton of books, so I'm gonna show you most of those. I'm gonna show you all the ones that I am interested in and then there's a few that Chris bought that I don't care about. So I'm just gonna show you all of them and they're in no particular order, but I'm very excited about most of them and I have actually read a lot of them as well. They're just books that I never owned because I took them out from the library, so now I own them and I got them for ridiculously cheap so let's just show all these books shall we so the first book I have here is Wolf Speaker and this is by Tamara Pierce this is the second book in the Immortals I haven't read this book but I did read the first book and I really enjoyed it actually but I never continued on so now I have the second book so I can do so I'm gonna reread the first book before I go on to the second book but I have it and that's what matters. I'm so excited. The next two books here I have are from the same author and it is Mercedes Lackey. Chris and I have been collecting her books recently and I love the covers of most of her books. So the first one we have here is Oathbreakers and this is book two of Thou is an Honor, obviously by Mercedes Lackey. And these books just have the coolest covers ever, like seriously. And this was in perfect condition and it was $2 so I feel like that's pretty good. And then we also got the uh, another book in her series. I think this is the third book. Anyway, it's the last book in the series and it's called Oath of Blood. And of course it has an amazing cover because it's a Mercedes Lackey book and I love the covers of her books. So I have those. I still haven't read a Mercedes Lackey book, but slowly and steadily Chris and I are collecting all of her books. So now I just have a few more to add to the list of books that we own by Mercedes Lackey, but we have not read. So I hope to fix that soon though. The next book that I have here is The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis. This is the third book in The Chronicles of Narnia. I always get it mixed up because this is the fifth book in my mind because it was written fifth, but it's the third one chronologically. And these are the colored illustration editions, which is, they're really amazing. And this book is really heavy and it's so beautiful and like, thick feeling and like the pages are really nice quality and it just really cool editions of the books and so I really want to collect all of them in this edition and this is the first one I've acquired so far. It is my least favorite in the series ironically so starting with my least favorite and maybe eventually you'll end up with my most favorite so I'm going to start collecting these so you may see these in future book hauls pretty frequently. The next book I have here is one that I have also read, and it is Fable Haven by Brandon Mole. This is the first book in the Fable Haven series by Brandon Mole. And I read this years ago, and I didn't like it that much. And then, then I had a friend who bullied me into reading it again a few years later, and I liked it better the second time. I think I gave it three stars or 3.5 stars. Like, I liked it, but it's not my favorite. Since we found the first book, I figured I might as well pick it up because I have read it, and um, eventually we'll pick up the second book, and I'll continue on with the series but I have read this and we'll see how the series goes for me but I thought I would pick it up and it's a story about two kids who go and live with their grandfather for the summer and then mysterious stuff starts happening. The next book that we have here is possibly one of the ones I'm most excited about. I'm really excited about all of them but this one I was super excited about and <laughs> I'm so bad for buying sequels when I haven't read the first books but this is The Summer Queen by Joan D. Binge and um I have not read the first book yet, um, but these books are absolutely gorgeous. Both of them are out of print, but I think they did just start reprinting the first one, and I think they were planning on starting the reprinting of the second book, The Summer Queen. The first book is The Snow Queen, and these are science fiction books, and they're the covers are so beautiful, but Gwen from the Gwendolyn Reading Method um, really recommends the first book. Look how ridiculously tiny the font is in this book, though. And it's a really long book. It's This book is over 650 pages, but the t font is tiny, so it will take me forever to get through. I still have not found the Snow Queen, but I have my eyes open and will constantly be looking for it so that I can have both of them but when I saw this I couldn't pass it up because I've been looking for these books for years at this point. The next book that I have here is one that I again have also read and it is Amulet the Stonekeeper book one the Amulet series by 
Kazu Kabushi. I don't know if I'm saying that right, probably not. It, if you guys haven't seen this, I don't know what rock you're living under, but it is a graphic novel about two kids and their mom who go and stay at, I don't know, their dead grandpa's house or something like that, and then shenanigans happen. It's a little bit dark, I feel like, but so don't be deceived and think like, oh, it's like a graphic novel, this would be great for like a six-year-old. I would say it's a little bit older, maybe eight-year-old status, but it's really fun. I have read the first two books, and I liked them both. I gave them each three stars. Nothing to write home about, but they're quite fun, and I will definitely continue on with the series at some point, but I didn't own the first book yet, so when I found it for $1.50 in perfect condition, I couldn't pass it up. The next book that I have here is one of my favorites of all time. Well, the series is one of my favorites of all time, and it is The Thief by Megan Whalen Turner. This is the first book in the Thief series. I enjoyed this book when I read it several years ago. I gave it four stars, but the second book and the third books are the books that you need to actually read. If you read this book and didn't love it, or if you read this book and only enjoy it, definitely continue on. The second book blew my mind, and then the third book blew my mind even harder. So this book, like I said, I did really enjoy, but keep pushing on with the series. But since I didn't own this book and I've been looking for it for years and wanting to buy it for years, I figured I'd pick it up. I do own the second book, so I guess all I need is the third book. And then I'll have all the series that is out at this point, but it's really, really great. I highly recommend this young adult fantasy. It's like early, early young adult. This was a young adult book before young adult books existed. It was written in um, 1996, which it's just a year after I was born, so it's an older young adult book, but highly, highly amazing, and I really need to reread this book, and I'm looking forward to doing so. The next book I have not read, unfortunately, but I have read the first book in the series, and it is The Time Garden by Edward Eager. The first book in the series is Half Magic, and it is one of my favorite books of all time. It's a fun children's book about these kids who are sad because they aren't going away to the lake or anywhere fun for the summer. They're just staying home and it's going to be really boring and they discover Edith Nesbitt who is a real author. They discover some of her books in the library and they read all her books back to back in like a month and love them all and they're really sad because their summers are going to be so boring though and then some interesting magical things start happening and they realize maybe their summer won't be so boring after all. This is one of the later books in the series and I don't think these books need to be read in order either. I think they should be but they don't have to be but I've only read the first couple books in the series so when I saw this really cool old edition of it I just had to grab it. The next book is a book that I already have read and <laughs> already own but but wanted to get another copy of because it's different and it is for Biddle's sake and this is A Princess Tale by Gail Carson Levine. Gail Carson Levine wrote six different books called The Princess Tales. They're all about this long. They're just short itty bitty tiny little books and with fairly large font and they're just each a retelling of a fairy tale. These are making fun of fairy tales, finding some flaws in classic fairy tales and poking fun at them. I don't remember which one for Biddle's sake is about. There's a frog on the cover so it might be the princess and the frog but I don't think it is. I don't remember which one this is but she has five different ones besides this. I own a bind up of all of them and I own a couple of them in editions like this but I didn't own this one so I decided to grab it. The other princess tales are The Fairy's Mistake, The Princess Test, Princess Sonora and the Long Sleeve, Cinderella's and the Glass Hill, and The Fairy's Return. And and yeah, they're just really cute and really funny and they made me laugh so hard when I read them. They just, they are so funny. So I really, really enjoy this one. They are very humorous. Unlike Gail Carson Levine's other books where they are a little more serious but they're still very fun but they, they are more serious. These are just straight up making fun of fairy tales and it's kind of awesome and I love it for that. The next book is another book that I have read and I actually own a copy of this but this was in such a cool copy that I, I just couldn't pass it up and it is Dancing Shoes by Noel Stratfield. This book is one that I actually bought for myself when I was young when I had a gift card from Barnes & Noble and I actually physically read it when I was 10 which is a great feat for when I was 10 because I did not read any physical books until I was like 18. I 
only listened to them pretty much. So this edition of the book was published in 1982. Most of Neil Stratfold's books are out of print and that is very sad so it's just really cool to see some older editions of her books. Um, any book that I see of hers I will probably buy. I, I only own four of her books unfortunately because I can't find the other ones except for for like 80 or 100 dollars because they're out of print so it's really heartbreaking. I'm hoping that a publisher steps up to the plate and republishes her books because I know so many people who would really love if they did that. Dancing Shoes is not my favorite. It's about two sisters who go and take ballet I believe. It's not my favorite of her books. I really enjoy ballet shoes the best and I even like theater shoes better than this one but I still liked it and I think I gave it three or four stars so it's good but I haven't read it in like 10 years so maybe I'll do that eventually. The next book is one that I think I've almost bought and book out with a couple times and then I saw it in a thrift store for a buck fifty so that works great and it is Winterlane by Sarah Prinez. Um, this is a story about a girl who I think it's set in modern times and then she ends up going and getting transported to the world of Fae I believe or something very similar to that. I just really enjoy the cover of this book and I love middle grade stories and I'm pretty sure I will enjoy this a lot because fantasy middle grade is my life and so yeah I decided to pick it up because it's one that I have been eyeing for a long time and it was a dollar fifty so don't judge me. The next this book is one that I have read um, a couple times and this is another one that I actually physically read when I was younger which like I said it was a pretty strong feat. It meant that I really cared about that book if I physically read it. If I cared enough to read it after finding out that I couldn't listen to it. And that is Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Lindgren. This is the Puffern Modern Classics edition and I love these editions of the books. I have I think three Roald Dahl books in this edition and I want to find the other Pippi Longstocking books and just a bunch of children's classics in these editions because they are some of my favorites. They're extremely cute and adorable and this of course has the wonderful illustrations inside of Pippi being ridiculous and this was one of my favorite childhood books. I have um, I think I only read it once or twice, which is very little for me when I was younger, but I checked out this really huge copy of all of the books wrapped up into one big bind up and it was like ginormous. It was so big. It was like this big and it was so big and I spent a few days just with that spread out on my lap reading these books and I was really excited to see this version of it because it is one of my favorite childhood books. The next book is one that I have not read in a really long time but I'm so excited to own because I have never owned a copy of it before and it is The Story of King Arthur and His Knights by Howard Pyle. I mentioned Howard Pyle on my channel before and like his illustration and stuff and I've mentioned him to Chris all the time and Chris never really knows who I'm talking about but Howard Pyle wrote and illustrated these Keen Arthur books. He also did ones um, about Robin Hood if I'm not mistaken and I love his illustrations. They're some of my favorites of all time. They are gorgeous and I did not own this or anything and I have not read this book since I was six and my mom read it to me and several of his other King Arthur books to me and my older siblings when we were having lunch or drawing and it was just really great. I have a lot of great memories with this and I really want to read these versions of King Arthur because I feel like Howard Pyle is it's the person to turn to for King Arthur, so I've been really dying to find this again, and now I did. So now I can read it and enjoy these beautiful illustrations, and I am absolutely thrilled. This printing is from 1981, by the way. The next two books go together, and they're kind of guilty pleasure slash really fun for me, so don't judge me. They are some of the Disney fairy books. The first one I have here is Tink North of Neverland, and these are just the Disney fairy books, and the reason I love these is because when I was younger I could not draw worth anything and then I started reading these books and I saw the beautiful illustrations inside. They're very cartoony but the character movement in these books is incredible. Look at their body movement. It's so gorgeous and I started drawing them and this is how I learned how to draw because the characters in this book have beautiful body shapes and so I would just sit there and draw from these body shapes for hours and hours. I probably would draw for about four hours a day from these books or other books and 
this is how I learned how to draw. So these are, I have a lot of nostalgia for them and I just, I loved these books when I was younger. So I also grabbed Dulce's Taste of Magic. I wasn't sure if I already owned this one and I think I might, but I just grab them whenever I see them. I think I have one more over here as well and then I have several in California, but these are just so sweet and have such wonderful illustrations that I just adore them. The next book I have here is one that I have not read and I actually picked this up from a library book sale months and months ago, but I really wanted to show it in a haul because I never did, and it is Delilah Dirk and the Turkish Lieutenant, and this is by Tony Cliff. I saw Lindsay talking about this forever ago. She said it wasn't her favorite of all time, but when I saw it for, I think, a dollar, I decided I'd pick it up and give it a try. It is a graphic novel, and um, I don't have very many of those to read on my shelf right now, so I picked it up, and I'm excited to experience the story. The next book I have here is a novelty item, and when I saw it, I just could not pass it up because it was one of the most ridiculous books I've ever seen in my life, and it is this ginormous edition of Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. Would have made sense to show this by the other Gail Carson Levine book, huh, Giselle? But this book had to be on the bottom of the stack. The next book I have here is a novelty item, and when I saw it, I just could not pass it up because it was one of the most ridiculous books I've ever seen in my life, and it is this ginormous edition of Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. Would have made sense to show this by the other Gail Carson Levine book, huh, Giselle? But this book had to be on the bottom of the stack, and that one had to be pretty close because it, to the, anyway. This is a huge edition, a, a special read out loud edition of Ella Enchanted, one of my favorite childhood books. I already own a copy of this book, but this, look how huge this print is. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. This book is like five times the size of me. It is ginormous, and it's one of these weird new ugly covers. I prefer the old cover so much better. Anyway ridiculously large book but I just had to pick it up when I saw it because it's so silly like what why do we need a version this big I'm sure I will appreciate it though when my eyes start to go and I want to read this to my children slash just read it in general and I can be all old and be like oh I can still read these words without my glasses so <laughs> sorry not making fun of any people who have to wear glasses to read I didn't mean it that way I'm just saying it's just gonna be awesome for when I'm older, but it's just so silly. Why is this so big? I have never heard of these before, but I will definitely be keeping my eyes out for other special read out loud editions of some of my favorite books because this is ridiculous. The next book I have here is The Story of Holly and Ivy, and this is by Rummer Godden, and the pictures are by Barbara Cooney. This is one of my favorite childhood books, my fav one of my favorite Christmas childhood books. Not quite my favorite, but one of them. And it is a story of a girl named Ivy and a doll named Holly, and how they kind of come together on Christmas Eve. It is a very sweet children's book that if you enjoy children's books, I highly recommend. My mom used to read this to me every single Christmas season and it's just very very cute and there's Holly being all adorable in her Christmas gear and basically Holly's just afraid that she's not going to get bought because she's a Christmas doll and it's already Christmas Eve so nobody's going to want to buy her um, until next year if even that and then Ivy I believe is an orphan who's going to live with a new family. It's been a while since I've read it, several years, but I really really want to reread it and so when I saw it and since I don't own an edition of it I decided to pick it up. I wanted to start collecting children's books that I grew up with to read to my children someday and I figure the best time to do that is now at thrift stores when they're like a dollar so that's what I'm going to start doing but I'm super excited to have this because I have a lot of nostalgia for this book. Behind me I just have a few more books that I want to pull off my shelf and show you that I have picked up in the last few months but never put in a haul and the first book of that is A Spell for Chameleon, I guess you would say? Chameleon? I don't know. It's the first book in the Xanath series by Piers Anthony. I have not read the series yet, any books of it, but it looks so ridiculous. The series, the covers are ridiculous. Even this first one, it's a dragon with wings and a scorpion, bat wings and a scorpion tail. Like, 
want. So I'm really interested to read the series and also to read the myth series. So so the series and the myth series are two series that I'm going to keep my eyes out for to find books from as long as they're in good condition because I'd really like to start reading both of these series because they're insane but I probably can't read them at the same time because I don't know if I can handle all that ridiculousness in two really long series at the same time. But I just wanted to show you I have picked it up. I also got for my birthday from my mom which I never read I'm sorry anyway I picked up The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee uh, uh, yeah. yep and this book is a retelling of Scheherazade or Book of a Thousand Days and I love Scheherazade actually at girls camp when you are 16 you get given a camp name that you have to be known as for the, the rest of when you're 16 and when you're 17 at camp and if people don't call you by that name then they have to like sing a song to you or something because you're one of the leaders at that point so when I was 15 because I went to camp a little early just because I have a late summer birthday I ended up getting the name Shahrazad as my camp name my mom chose it for me because all the girls in my family um, have gone to camp and they all got S names and so my mom is Sunshower and then I have a sister who is Serenade, I have a sister who is Symphony, and then I have a sister who is Showstopper and so I got given the name Scheherazade because Scheherazade was very learned and knew lots of fairy tales and stories that she was able to keep herself alive for so long so when I saw that there was a book about Scheherazade coming out I really really wanted it so I asked my mom to get it for me for my birthday. I'm really really excited to own this and I just need to read it now because I've had it for months now and still haven't done so. A few more books that I ended up picking up are some more books in the Squire's Tale series by Gerald Morris. Um, I picked up the first book which is Squire's Tale but then I also picked up the Squire, his knight, and his lady and then I picked up the Savage Damsel and the Dwarf and then Paris Falls Page. I think these are books two, three, and four in this series and I really want to read these and then I can keep buying the series as I read them. I really enjoyed the first book and it gave it I think 4.5 stars so I highly recommend these. They're so ridiculous but so many. They're retellings of Arthurian legends and yes I the covers are so silly so I really want to read these so I, I did pick them up a few months ago but have not continued on with the series since the booktube-a-thon unfortunately. Another book that my mom got for me for my birthday was Isla and the Happily Ever After and this is by Stephanie Perkins. I read Anna and the French Kiss um, almost two years ago and I hated it because it was like the worst piece of literature I've ever read in my life. It was awful everything about it was terrible. I hated that book so much. But I think it was mostly just the characters and that they were all awful people and doing awful things and deserve to die in a hole alone. So I really, really hate those characters. And so I figured I would like Lola and the Boy Next Door. And I did. I think I gave it four stars. But thinking about it now, I'd probably bump it down to 3.5. I really liked Cricket from that story. And he's actually one of my favorite male characters that I've ever read about. He's, he's a really good person. Lola was still really stupid. Ugh, Lola. So now I decided to pick up Island Ever After. Again, my mom got this for me for my birthday, so I've had it for a while and haven't read it yet, but I really, really want to. I did enjoy Lola, so I think I'll like Isla too, but Anna deserves to die alone because she's terrible. The next book I'm going to show you is one that I really don't know much about at all, and it is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. I just read the name. It's by Mary Ann Scheifer and Annie Barrows, and I've never heard of it before, but I saw the cover and read the name and read the synopsis, and I feel like it's something I'm really going to enjoy. It's written in letter format, but I just I feel like I'm going to enjoy this book so much, and so um, I picked it up a few months ago. I think it was less than a dollar. So I just thought it'd be fun and it's something I really want to try soon, which is why it's on my to read soon pile. The next book I have here, I actually bought several books in this edition. We can blame Ange from Beyond the Pages for this because she is always showing these books on her channel and I really, really, really wanted them, so I bought a few of them. The other few I do not have on my to read soon pile, which is why another not behind me, which is why I don't have them with me right now, but the first book is Cheerful Weather for the Wedding by Julia Strachey. This is a Persephone classic. These books are beautiful and I highly, highly recommend that you check them out even if you just want to go look online and 
see how gorgeous these Persephone books are. Anyway, I have this book. I got a couple other ones as well, which I will probably pop pictures up of on here as well. I have a couple and I don't remember the names of them right now because I'm awful. I think one of them is ma Making of a Mar Marquess or something and that is by Frances Hodgson Burnett and then I also have Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day, but I don't remember the author's name. Anyway, so I picked up these three. They are really beautiful. I'm currently reading this one, and it's just a short little classic that I hope to finish up soon. The next book I have here is A Dragon Lover's Treasury of Fantastic Stories, and then this is Anne McCaffrey, Orson Scott Card, Jane Yolen, and Roger Zelaney and some other authors and they're all just short dragon stories and oh my goodness I love dragons so much so I just think this and it's also edited by Margaret Weiss so another big fantasy author but these are all the stories that are in this book and I just I think this would be a really fun book if I'm in the mood for just short stories then I can just go through and be like oh, I want to read the story by, like, Joan D. Vinge and get, like, a taste of her writing and stuff. And this also has the Ice Dragon in it, which Chris and I picked up a copy of the Ice Dragon a few months ago, which I haven't read yet, but that one's illustrated, so we do have a duplicate, but that one's, like, really beautiful, so it's okay. But we picked up this, and I'm really excited to have this because dragons. And last book I'm going to show in today's haul is Magician by Raymond E. Feist. This is the first book that you should read of Raymond E. Feist because all his books are connected together. Even his other books that he co-writes with other authors, I believe, they're all part of the same interconnecting ridiculousness that is Raymond E. Feist. It's a bind up of the two parts of the magician duology and I would rather have them as a bind up so I bought this um, off of thrift books I believe or ebooks over the summer and I just didn't get to it because life happened and I just didn't end up reading um, over the rest of the summer after I got this but I did pick it up it's kind of a little bit of a chunker but just because the pages are so big it's, I know it's gonna take me like a really long time to read this book but I definitely want to read it soon so that I can move on with the rest of Raymond E. Feist's books so those are all the books that I picked up yesterday and then over the past few months that I wanted to show you guys I hope this wasn't too rambly but I did read a lot of these books and I was so excited to show them to you so I hope you enjoyed this book haul. Let me know if you've read any of these books because like I said I've read a lot of them so I'd love to hear your thoughts on the ones that I have read and the ones that I haven't so I can get an idea of who likes what and what you guys thought of them. So yeah just talk to me about anything you want below and I will see you very soon. Bye everyone.